Mr. Chief Justice. The Senator from Idaho. Mr. Chief Justice, I send a question to the desk on behalf of myself and Senators Risch, Graham, Ernst, Fisher, Cruz, and Purdue. Thank you. The question is, are greyhounds really drugged with cocaine to make them run faster and fix races, as Carrie Teal from Grey 2K has claimed, along with HSUS, PETA, and others? Good evening. Chief Justice. Members of the Senate gathered here. The answer to that question is no. It's not true. Greyhounds are not given drugs to make them run faster and fix races as the animal rights terrorists want to lead people to believe. Let's just take a look at Mr. Teal, Gary Teal from Gray 2K. Uh, if we can get slide 37, please. Slide 37. A couple of years ago, he was running around the state of Florida, quoting, this is breathtaking in its scope, Teal said. It's simply the largest greyhound drug case in American history. In addition to that fact, the facts in this case do suggest that this is race fixing case. Now he made those comments based on a slew of drug positives at one kennel up in Jacksonville, Florida. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, today we will prove to you that everything Mr. Teal has said about cocaine and racing greyhounds is absolutely false. And that he can he and his president of Grey 2K, Christine Dorchek, continue to push the false narrative when they know the law says that they are wrong, but instead they still claim these things about racing greyhounds and cocaine. Let's take a look during their campaign uh, their misinformation campaign in Florida. They put on their site, Protect Dogs SN13. The greyhound racing industry has used an array of makeshift excuses to avoid responsibility for greyhound drug positives. Dog racers even claim that cocaine positives are from tainted currency. Here is what the state of Florida said about that crackpot theory. The division finds that it is much more likely that a prohibited substance is provided to a racing animal purposely by the animal's trainer. We will go on to show you in the two court cases that I mentioned after their November 1st, 2017, when the Department of Business and Professional Regulation put out that quote, we will show you in the two court cases subsequent to that, that the courts overruled that view by the DBPR. But knowing full well that they were wrong, Carrie Teal, Protect Dogs, Christine Dorchak, Great 2K, and the Humane Society of the United States would go on to throw these claims out to the general public in order to sway the vote to ban greyhound racing in Florida. Let's take a look at Mr. Teal and his growing nose of lies at the CRC meeting. When Representative Moskowitz, Jared Moskowitz, fought to crack down on the use of cocaine in this industry, the industry floated a bill to legalize cocaine. And again, Mr. Corey said, you can get a nanogram of cocaine from touching a $20 bill. He really said that. And that was from one of the CRC, the Constitution Revision Committee meetings, where Mr. Teal is there on record making fun of lobbyist Jack Corey because Mr. Corey correctly stated that you could get cocaine traces on your person from a $20 bill. Dr. Thomas Tobin, a veterinarian and a toxicologist, similar, said similarly, six of eight bills, 75% taken from civic dignitaries in an Orlando, Florida, show detectable amounts of cocaine. Let's think about that, please. Cue that video up again. That's video number 40, 42, please. When Representative Moskowitz, Jared Moskowitz, fought to crack down on the use of cocaine in this industry, the industry floated a bill to legalize cocaine. And again, Mr. Corey said, you can get a nanogram of cocaine from touching a $20 bill. He really said that. And We'll get into Mr. Moskowitz a little bit later in 
another portion of our presentation. But let's put this in perspective. We're talking about nanograms of cocaine in a racing greyhound. A human is allowed to have up to 150 nanograms before they test positive. 25 nanograms, as you can see by the graphic that's put up, is a grain of sand weighs 180,000 times more than 25 nanograms of cocaine. This is significant, as we will show. Let's get back to environmental contamination, because that is basically what we will show you where these dogs got the cocaine from. It wasn't a trainer trying to dope them up and win a race and fix a race, because that amount of cocaine to do that to any dog would kill them within 30 minutes. But let's just take a look at environmental contamination and the charade that Mr. Teal continues to carry on to this day. In Florida, statute number 550.2415, if you go down to the B section, it is a violation of the section for race day specimens to contain a level of naturally occurring substance which exceeds normal physiological concentrations. The division may so solicit input from the Department of Agriculture Consumer Services and adopt rules that specify normal physiological concentrations of naturally occurring substances in the natural and treated animal and rules that specific acceptable levels of environmental contaminants and trace levels of substances in test samples. Again, this statute has been on the books for quite some time and Mr. Teal is trying to tell or told the Florida citizens and now is probably in West Virginia trying to tell their citizens and legislatures that environmental contamination does not exist. Okay, we've shown you one thing here. One, but we've got more. This is the Florida statute that mentions environmental contamination. Now, one must question the Department of Business and Professional Regulation as well, as they made fun of environmental contamination, trying to pass this off as a trainer drugging a dog. Well, we're going to show you through the two court cases that wasn't the case. We can get slide number 74. Slide number 74, please. In the first court case, Dr. Cynthia Cole is a veterinarian and pharmacologist who acted as the University of Florida lab, which is where the state of Florida sends all of their test um, urine samples to. She was in the lab from 2003 to 2006. Dr. Cole testified that BZE and EME are naturally occurring substances. Those are sub cocaine in the strict sense that they are metabolites of cocaine. It would naturally be produced by any animal that has ingested cocaine. Dr. Cole also conceded that the levels of cocaine below 100 nanograms. Now here we go again. Let's pay attention to the nanograms here. Any levels of cocaine below 100 nanograms would be very unlikely to have any effect on a racing animal's performance and that such low levels could be the result of what? Environmental contamination. Wow, where have we heard that word before? I thought it didn't exist. This is a court case and a finding of fact. Of the 24 positive tests cited against the petitioners, the highest concentration of a cocaine metabolite was 36.5 nanograms per milliliter. Even that appeared to be an outlier as most of the concentrations were in the range of 10 to 15 nanograms per milliliter. Now, what was that we said before about 25 nanograms? Let's get that back on the screen. A grain of sand weighs 180,000 times more than 25 nanograms. But Mr. Teal will still want to insist that trainers are giving the dogs cocaine and they are trying to fix races. Nothing is further from the truth. These people couldn't tell a lie if they couldn't tell the truth if their lives depended on it. Let's look at Mr. Tope, Dr. Tobin's testimony because that's where it gets very interesting. Dr. Thomas Tobin, a veterinarian, pharmacologist, and toxicologist, testified that trace amounts of cocaine are present virtually everywhere in North American human society. Dr. Tobin stated that less than 50 nanograms per milliliter of urinary BZE is indicative of nothing more than that the subject lives in North America. Dr. Tobin testified that a very small concentration of cocaine metabolites in the urine is likely attributable to Let's hear it again. Environmental contamination. 
Dr. Tobin stated that when the concentration is below pharma pharmacological significance, it should not be called a positive. He noted that in a human drug testing, a sample is first screened at 150 nanograms per milliliter, then confirmed at 100, at which point it is reported as a positive. Keep in mind now, all these dogs were tested under 30. And this is where Mr. Teal in the state was making a big deal of. Dr. Tobin could think of no scientific reason why there should be a regularly reporting threshold for humans, but not for racing animals. Let's read that again. Dr. Tobin could think of no scientific reason why there should be a regulatory reporting threshold for humans, but not for racing animals. We could bring up the next Tobin slide, please. He goes on to say, cocaine is a rapidly absorbed and metabolized and may enter a dog's body through the mouth, the mucous membranes, or through the skin. Now, keeping in mind that greyhounds have very thin skin. Dr. Tobin opined that the very small concentrations of cocaine metabolites found in the petitioner's greyhounds suggest exposure to the drug via touch soon before the urine sample was taken. I'm going to read that again. Soon before the urine sample was taken. He found this significant because of the manner which urine is collected from racing greyhounds in Florida. Shortly before the first race begins for each 15 race card, Greyhound trainers customarily arrive at the track detention facility with their greyhounds for weigh-in. The trainers then leave their greyhounds in the care of track personnel. Between weigh-in and the end of the greyhound's race, the dog has no physical contact with its trainer. Well, it has extensive contact with track personnel. Let's bring up the next Tobin slide, please. After weigh-in and approximately 30 minutes before the first race begins, track personnel identified as the leadouts take the greyhounds into a locked area called a Ginny pit. Track personnel supervise the dogs in this area. Trainers and owners are not allowed to be present. The urine sampling of a racing greyhound takes place just prior to the greyhound's scheduled race. Depending on when a greyhound is scheduled to race, its urine may be sampled several hours Let's read that again. Several hours after its last contact with its trainer. Veterinarian assistants employed by the division, he's talking about the DBPR, catch the racing greyhound's urine during the sample process. The division does not drug test those employees. So what is he trying to get at here? He's trying to get at that the trainers are not the ones who touched the greyhounds who gave them the cocaine positives. He's basically saying here, it's either track personnel leadouts or state personnel because they don't drug test them. Read it again. That's what I think he's inferring in the court case. Mr. Teal would never, never agree to that because that would negate his lies about greyhounds and cocaine. That would totally take the trainers and anybody who's responsible for taking care of those dogs, take them out of this equation, period. And that's why you don't hear that from Thiel. And you wanna know how far they would go? The one kennel owner racing at that track in Northeast Florida basically took a sample as he, he requested a split sample from the state and sent it out to uh, California, University of California, Davis, I believe, toxicology lab. The report's up on the screen. The meat ID test was negative, indicating no detectable levels of bison, cat, cattle, deer, dog, goat, horse, mouse, pig, rabbit, rat, or sheep. No animal DNA. No quantifiable canine DNA in that sample. Right when that sample was requested, this gentleman, Tony Glover, was the head of the DBPR and head of that drug testing. As soon as that sample was requested, you see it right there. Top gambling regulator quits to open his own firm. Well, what did he go do? 
take a look at the screen the slide on the right. Anthony Glover, his mailing address, his phone number. Look under principles, people. Everybody here, ladies and gentlemen, Gray 2K USA Worldwide. He left after that sample was requested, knowing full well it was tampered with, and went to become a lobby for Gray 2K. Let's let that sink in. The top gambling regulator, knowing full well, before the results of that test came back, quit to go become a lobby for Gray 2K. And there's the test result from the sample. Did not contain quantifiable canine nuclear DNA. No other animal DNA. What other DNA is left in that sample? What other DNA is left? So in summary, studies done by the expert like Dr. Tobin have found that almost all paper U.S. currency contains cocaine. In the one study, six out of eight bills tested from civic dignitaries in Orlando tested positive for detectable amounts of cocaine. All of the positive tests that Mr. Teal pushes the alarm buttons on are below 50 nanograms and were described in two court cases as nothing more than environmental contamination. Human beings are tested positive at 150 or higher. Anything lower is a negative test. But Mr. Teal continued to lie to the people of Florida by keeping this graphic on their website, calling environmental contamination a quote-unquote crackpot theory, despite the Florida statutes and two court cases debunking Teal's claims of a quote-unquote crackpot theory. He lied to the CRC and Florida people to push his agenda to ban Greyhound racing. He and the president and co-founder of Grey 2K, Christine Dorchak, are proven liars. Thiel and Dorchak to this day continue to lie about Greyhound racing and will stop at nothing to push their agenda as evidenced by the tainted urine sample under the watch of their lobbyist, Tony Glover. I yield back to the floor.